Hey everyone, and today we're looking at series circuits. So as you can see over here, I have a battery and connected to this battery are wires that, and I have a resistor, let's call it R1. And let's say I wanted to connect another resistor, R2, to this resistor, R1, in series. How do I do it? The idea is this, if it's in series, it means that it must be connected one after another, such that there's only one path for the current to flow. Let me demonstrate. One after another, so probably it will look something like this, after one after another, so R2. And there's only one path for the current to flow. So let's look at the flow of the current. Uh, let's look at the battery, positive, negative. And so conventional current will start from the positive end, and so the current flows out. Let's call this I and it will flow. And you notice that there's only one path for the current to flow. The current cannot just suddenly leave the wire. That does not happen, that's illegal, right? It has to stick to the wire. It, it cannot just leave the wire, like that, that does not happen at all. Okay, so, um, so you can see here, the current going through R1 has to leave R1, it has to go through R2, leave R2, and it goes all the way back to the battery. And so let's, let's call this current going through R1, let's call this I1, and this current going through R2, let's call it I2. And you can see that there's only one path for the current to flow, therefore the two resistors R1 and R2 must be in series, and we can then state that I1 equals to I2 for two resistors that are in series with each other. So if these two resistors, if I tell you R1 is in series with R2, then this relationship definitely holds. And so let me write it over here. This is basically for the relationship for current for I. All right. And so um, I'm just going to throw you a quick question uh, over on the right and just, just to quickly test your understanding, especially if this concept is completely new to you. Let's say I have two resistors now, right? And I told you that um, this is R1 and this is R2. And I told you that the current flowing through I1 is 3 amperes. My question to you is what is the current flowing through I2? You can just pause the video, think about it. Okay, and this, let's look at the flow of the current again. The current I1 is 3 amperes. The 3 amperes has nowhere else to go. It has to go through R2. So this really is 3 amperes. It follows this relationship. I1 must equal to I2 because you must see you must first see that R1 is in series with R2, then you conclude I1 equals to I2, then you conclude that the current must be the same. All right, now let's uh, look at the circuit one more time. Let me just draw it below here. R1 and R2. Now let's look at the potential difference. So what if I told you that this battery let's, has a potential difference of V, let's call it E. Um, now for, in, in this case, for the sake of the example, let's just call it 10 volts. Let's just assign it to be 10 volts. What I like to do is on the positive end, I will assign a potential of 10. On the negative end, I assign it as zero. Such that when you connect a voltmeter, when you connect a voltmeter across it, what the voltmeter does is that it reads, it reads 10, something, something like this, it reads 10 on this end, right, because it's potential 10 here, and it reads 0 over here, and then it does the math for you, it, 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 will, it will say, oh, uh, I read 10 and I read 0, and the difference, the potential difference is therefore 10 minus 0, and it, it spits out 10 volts for you. And that makes sense, right, when you connect a voltmeter, across a battery, you do expect to get 10 volts, right? Okay, then um, 
now here's the next part. The potential only changes when the current goes across some uh, something with resistance. So in this case, we assume the wires do not have any resistance. And so that means it's 10 all the way. It really is uh, 10 all the way. Right? There's, no, there's no change. The potential is still 10 all the way over here. And this is 0, so there's no resistance in the wires. So it's 0 all the way. So what this tells me, if you look at it like this, is that if you connected a voltmeter across this entire chunk, it will still give you 10 over here uh, on, on the left minus 0. So it will still give you this. It will still spit out 10 volts for you. Now, the question here is that when the current goes through or something with resistance, so R1, of course, it has resistance, so the potential here definitely cannot be 10, it cannot be 0. It will be some, some number in the middle, some number in the middle between 10 and, and 0. And so... The idea is that if you connected a voltmeter, let's call this V1, and let's call this V2. I'm just going to use random numbers to prove a point. So let's say the potential um, in the middle here is actually, uh, let's say it's um, 6. Then what would V1 read? V1 would be 10 minus 6 equals to 4. And what would V2 read? It would read 6 minus 0 equals to 6. Right? And what do you notice? You notice that V4, uh, oh, sorry, V1 plus V2 gives you 4 plus 6. And that eventually gives you, sorry, the voltage of the battery, which is 10. And this is the relationship for resistors in series, is that they have to share, in some sense, they have to share the total potential difference from the battery. It's 10 volts, it will be split among R1 and R2, such that when you add up the potentials across R1, uh, plus the potential across R2, it should add up, give you back the potential difference across the battery. Right, and so this, um, is for potential difference. So right now I'm just going to throw you a, a quick question just to check your understanding and you can do it, pause the video and do it to make sure that you do understand. Okay, let me just write it here. So if I have, want to get a series circuit, R1 and R2, and I told you that V1, oh sorry, I told you that this is 9 volts. And, and I told you that V1 and V2. And V2 is, let's say, um, uh, 4 volts. My question to you is, what is V1? Pause the video, think about it. Okay, so now you see, first thing you must note is that R1 and R2 are in series with each other. It's a series circuit. Then the next step is that you think about this. Oh, in that case, V1 plus V2 must be um, VE, or the, or the potential difference across the battery. And so you construct the equation V1 plus V2, um, which is 4, must equal to 9, which is VE. V1, therefore, will be 9 minus 4. And that gives you 5 volts. There you go. All right, so for the next part, um, we looked at current and potential difference. Now we're going to look at um, resistance for a series circuit. So let's go ahead and just construct that same simple series circuit. And right now, let's just say that the resistance of R1 is R1, that's the resistance itself, and R2 is R2, that's the resistance of the resistor. And so we want to find a way to represent the total resistance. So if you have R1 and R2 and you combine them, what is the total resistance? And we can represent this 
And you see total, usually we use the word effective or R subscript EFF. The effective resistance for a series circuit is simply R1 plus R2. We simply add it up. And this is for um, resistance. So I'm just going to throw you a quick example once again, just to for you to just kickstart your brain working in this way. So let's say we have a series circuit. First thing, recognize there's a series circuit. Second thing, let's say if I told you this is two ohms. So ohm is the unit for resistance. As a quick recap, and let's say um, the other resistor is, let's say, 5 ohms. Then I will ask you what is the total or the effective resistance. You can pause the video and just think about it. And there you go. So um, effective resistance is simply R1 plus R2, and that is 2 plus 5, and that gives me 7 ohms. You're done. And there you go. This is a quick introduction to series circuits.